Age of Empires 4 puzzlingly took a very rigid approach for hotkeys despite being a fast-paced RTS game. Welcome to Age of Noob everyone, let's talk about that. Age of Empires 4 is a beast of a game that will break down bit by bit as we approach its launch on October 28th for both the positives and the negatives. Unfortunately, hotkeys fall on the wrong side of the equation. But before we dive into why the approach they took is problematic, let's break down how the system was implemented and how it compares to other games first. The first change that everyone immediately saw was, of course, the divided grid system. In Age of Empires 4, the buildings are no longer initially classified as economy and military, for the hotkey system like in Age of Empires 2. Instead, it is initially divided into four sections, the Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age, and Imperial Age. The player then has a 5x3 grid that he or she will assign a key to each square. This same grid then applies to each age's corresponding buildings. Hence, the player first presses the key for whichever age the building he or she wants to construct is in, then presses the key binding for the box on the grid which corresponds to the building to be constructed. In case you're wondering whether you can move the icons in the UI around, you can't. Nor do I think you should be able to because that would be awful game design just to bind some keys. This same grid also applies to unit control as well, and not just buildings, but I'll get to that in a moment. Taking all of this into consideration, you don't have to be a scientist to immediately recognize the shortcomings of this approach. So let's break this down carefully. Number one, the initial subcategorization of the four ages is completely unnecessary. Simply put, there are too few unique buildings in Age of Empires to warrant it to be divided into four initial subcategories. The initial military and economy classification in Age of Empires 2 divided the buildings into almost half and half, whereas the Castle Age and Imperial Age in Age of Empires 4 have so few buildings that they cannot even make up more than three squares. Think about it, you're forced to bind a brand new key just for the university alone. Same goes for the monastery and the siege workshop. All of this is accomplished in Age of Empires 2 with two fewer initial keys. Hence, the developers should give the option to players to categorize the buildings as economy and military. Heck, I'd even go as far as allowing the players to create their own subcategorization. Have an advanced button somewhere and let players decide which initial buttons they'd like to assign a group of buildings to. Someone somewhere might want to group all walls and fortifications into its own category because that's how he or she plays comfortably. So that person might have an economic, military and fortification subcategories bound to the Q, W and E keys respectively. But this is extreme of course, as Typically, and as mentioned earlier, there are so few unique buildings to construct in Age of Empires that you're mostly okay with just dividing it into two. But I guarantee you someone would want to further customize this, and I think that person should be given the option to do so. And why not? There is zero downside to this. Literally not a single reason why this shouldn't be implemented because it's such a quick fix. Number 2. Even if we, as the player base, somehow get used to this new four subcategorizations based on what age the building's in, this new grid system forces, I repeat, forces multiple unit actions and buildings onto a single keybind. This is essentially the heart of the problem. So what do I mean by this? You see, each box on this 5x3 grid is assigned one key regardless of where this grid shows up in the game. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I, as Age of Noob, bound my initial keys to A, S, D, and F for the Dark, Feudal, Castle, and Imperial Ages respectively instead of the default Q, W, E, and R. I can do this just fine. Now, let's take the topmost left icon as an example. Let's say that I want to bind that box to the A key because I saw that that's where the house icon is and I want to bind building houses to A. Fantastic, I get back to the game and fair enough, when I click a villager and hit the A key twice, the first to select the dark age and the second to select the top leftmost box, I can make a house. Now let's say that I want to bind the blacksmith to the S key 
as that is what I used for years in Age of Empires 2 and I want to continue to do so due to all of that trained muscle memory. Guess what? You're now forced to use the blacksmith on the A key. I'll have to click the feudal button, S, then the top leftmost box, A, to build the blacksmith. If I want to change the blacksmith's box to S, then the house now is bound to the S key, which is not what I want. And it doesn't stop there. The top left icon also constructs the monastery and the university. So this means that my simple decision of wanting to bind my house to the letter A has suddenly forced me to accept binding the blacksmith, the monastery, and the university all on the same A key. This is even worse for some boxes, as the box right below the now A key has an attack move, farm, archery range, and siege workshop assigned to it. You want to assign farms to F? Now all of the others I've just listed are also on the F key. This approach makes absolutely no sense. Players should be allowed to bind each and every action and building to whichever unique key they would like. This is an RTS game for heaven's sake. Why has no one questioned the need to keybind each building individually at the very least? And by the way, I'm not the only one talking about this. Countless forum posts, reddit posts, and even twit longer posts from both Age of Empires and Starcraft players and pros alike have expressed the same concerns. There is a consensus amongst not only players of different skill level, but also amongst players from different RTS games altogether. Number 3. No building cycling hotkeys. With the exception of the town center, you cannot go to your military buildings or cycle through them because no such hotkey exists. There is a select all military buildings hotkey which is absolutely amazing and works wonders by the way, but that has a separate function. It has its use case but it cannot replace the cycling hotkeys. They definitely need to add these. Number 4. No shift key or mouse button bindings are allowed. I really hope this is just a beta thing and a bug that the developers will just fix. We need to be allowed to use the side buttons on our mice and use the shift with other keys such as shift A or Q and so on. Also, for some reason, some bindings such as the select all villagers or select all military units are hard bound to control shift V and C. This is most likely another bug, but I'm not sure to be honest. Needless to say, nothing should be hard coded and we should have the option to change this as well. There is a secondary key to assign it so it's not the end of the world, but we should still be able to change this if we want to. Number 5. The Alt key is hard bound to camera movement. Once again, nothing, and I mean nothing, should be hard bound. I personally do not use the Alt key myself because I use Ctrl and Shift instead, but that doesn't mean that others shouldn't be able to use the Alt key in combination with other keys. Maybe someone wants to move the camera with the Ctrl key instead. Easy fix, just let the players decide what each does. Number 6, and this is a funny one, there are no hotkeys for actions like patrol or army stances because, well, those don't even exist in the game. So this is less of a hotkey issue and more of a gameplay and UI issue that I found out trying to bind these keys in military control. The missing features and UI problems are a topic for another video though. Now it's not all bad as they've introduced some nice new changes as well. For example, cycle through all villagers gathering wood, food, and so on are nice additions to have. This should allow you to pant your wood lines, farms, lumber camps, or mines much quicker if you use those. Furthermore, you can also assign an action by double-clicking a key which is awesome. This means that you can now intuitively assign two very similar things onto one key to not only save space, but also mental power. Unfortunately, apart from those two, there's nothing else in the hotkey system to really like about, as it saddens me to say that Age of Empires 4 is perhaps the most restrictive flagship game I've ever played as it relates to hotkey binding. Okay, if I take a step back to think about why they went out of their way to design this grid system, I may be able to put myself in the developer's shoes for a second. I think what they tried to do is to simplify the key binding process so that casual players do not feel intimidated when they open up the settings. If I take Age of Empires 2 for example, its hotkey system is almost perfect as you can bind almost every single thing in the game and more onto a unique key, including the mouse buttons. But you know what? If I look at it from the lens of a new player coming in, it's an absolute nightmare and definitely intimidating. 
It's a long list after a long list of things I have no clue what to do and I'd be scared to change something on that list. So I think what the developers try to do here is to completely streamline and simplify the hotkey process. As a new player, all I have to do is simply bind these 15 boxes and you're set to play the game. But this has a major problem. Some new players stay as casual players, but others start to take the game more seriously and get on its competitive side. They will then realize how bad the current system is and they will want to keybind properly. More importantly, the existing player bases coming over from Age of Empires 1, 2, 3 and even Starcraft 2 or other strategy games will have an awful experience. Those players will have years of muscle memory to unlearn and there will be a completely avoidable and unnecessary resistance. As I indicated previously, I actually think the grid system being the default option for newcomers is a good thing. In fact, I think previous entries like Age of Empires 2 could benefit from having some sort of simplified approach similar to this as well instead of being thrown into multiple long lists for new players. I remember a non-gamer friend of mine straight up refused to change the hotkeys because he was just uneasy with spending the time going through the whole list of things and get to change what they want. Age of Empires 4 will definitely attract newer players, so this simplified approach will be a good thing. However, the core player base, the player base that kept the franchise alive for two decades, the player base that has been so patient with all the missteps and bugs and server issues from Microsoft and sticking it out, and the player base coming over from other games like StarCraft, those folks will be immediately turned off. Devs, I'm not asking you to undo this grid system. Keep this as the default hotkey system for the new or casual players to hop onto this game easily. But please devs, add a small button somewhere that reads advanced options or something that allows us to keybind the 341,000 individual actions in the game to our heart's content. There is no cost or downside to implement this, none whatsoever. You get to keep your streamlined approach but not alienate the very player base that kept this franchise alive for two decades. So yes, the solution is to do what every other RTS game has ever allowed, individual key binding for every single action in the game, and I mean every single one. Only that way will you be able to convince the majority of the competitive players in the game to actually stay and play. Since this is one of the easiest fixes they can do to the game, this is another one of those no-brainer changes the developers must complete before launch. And I'm not joking, if the developers seriously release this game on October 28th with the current hotkey system, so many players will try the game, leave, and never look back again. These are the type of issues that you don't recover from. I don't know what they're thinking, but for the most players, bad hotkeys on a real-time strategy game is a deal breaker. I hope all of you have been enjoying my coverage of Age of Empires 4 so far. Please consider dropping a like and subscribing if you want more Age of Empires 4 content, as I have tons of videos still on the horizon. Having played both the closed and open beta, I'm excited and anxious at the same time. There is so much fun and potential in this game that is being held back by some of the most basic problems. All of this hard work could be undone because of some stupid hotkey or zoom problem. Those are really hills the developers don't want to die on. But will they actually listen to us? Well, we'll only find out soon enough. Thank you.